In this brief video, we will learn about a condition called cholidocal cyst. We will find out what it is, what symptoms it might cause, what is the risk of cancer, what are the different types of this cyst, and what are the best treatment options. To understand that, let's look at this cartoon drawing. It shows a liver. The liver produces bile, which is one of its main function amongst many others. The bile comes down these tubes and enters gallbladder, which stores it, concentrates it, and when needed, passes it back down into the bile tube, which traverses the pancreas and enters the small bowel to meet with the food coming down from here. The pancreas is a gland which sits behind the stomach. It has important functions in digestion. It produces enzymes which go down this tube called the pancreatic duct or tube and it enters separately into the small bowel alongside the bile duct. Now let's look at what is a bile duct cyst. A cholidocal cyst is a congenital, that is from birth, permanent abnormal dilatation of part of the bile duct. We've looked at this cartoon already, so let's just assume that this is the bile duct and the commonest variety is the one where the bile duct enlarges and is dilated in this fashion, a bit like a sac, all through down to here, so that it finally ends up looking like a sac rather than a smooth thin tube. That is a bile duct cyst or a variant of it. There is another problem associated with the large number of these cysts. Ordinarily, the bile tube, as I said before, enters the small bowel separate to the pancreatic duct, but in this case, these two may form an abnormal common channel, which looks something like this in this area. Now, the problem with this arrangement is that this allows the pancreas juice to reflux back into the bile tube, causing chronic inflammation of the bile duct lining, and this leads to significant issues, as well as increased increasing the risk of cancer. Now let's see what types of cysts there are. So this is the type 1 cyst with a uniform dilatation all of the bile duct outside of the liver down to its junction and exit into the small bowel. This is called a type 1 cyst. A type 2 cyst is an outpouching of the main bile duct a bit like this. Type 3 cyst is dilatation of the bile duct near its entry into the small bowel. This variant is quite rare. A type 4 cyst consists of segmental dilatation of the bile tube inside the liver or outside. It's classified as A and B. In A, both bile tubes inside and outside the liver are involved. And in type B, only those outside of the liver are involved. And now finally, the type 5 cyst entirely consists of dilatation, cystic dilatation within the substance of the liver. And there are two main variants, Caroli's disease, where it just consists of dilated cysts, and the Caroli's syndrome, where the cysts are associated with fibrosis of the liver. Now let's look at the symptoms. To better understand the symptoms, I've drawn the type 1 cyst over here. Normally the bile tube is a thin tube which propels bile downwards without too much of a problem and the bile enters the small bowel separately. Now it's turned into a sac and the bile just sits there without going anywhere, giving rise to stasis which may lead to problems. The majority of the patients will present before the age of 10 with a triad of symptoms of abdominal pain, mass and jaundice. Others will present incidentally where the cysts are found when a scan was formed for something else and yet another cohort will present with complications of this typically because of the stasis, there may be stones formed in the bile tube or parts of the bowel. There may be associated infection called cholangitis and sometimes triggering acute pancreatitis. This gland over here gets incited and becomes inflamed and becomes inflamed, giving rise to a painful condition. And lastly, with a frank cancer, I'll talk about this a bit more. It is important to realize that the risk of cancer is not just related to the bile duct but also the gallbladder and the pancreas. The presence of an abnormal Normal communication between the bile tube and the pancreas tube is a major risk factor in development of cancer because of the reflux of pancreatic juice into the bile tube itself, which is abnormal and dilated. Now, the median age of development of cancers is around 32. The risk of cancer is 11% in all adults, but this isn't stable over the life course of adults with this condition. It is as low as 10% in the first 30 years, rising steadily with age, nearly 40% at age 60 and over. The following investigations are commonly performed when assessing biliary cysts. Amongst the blood tests, the liver function tests often show derangement. If there is infection associated with it, the inflammatory markers may be elevated, and if a frank cancer is present, then some of the cancer markers are raised. The mainstay of assessing cholidocal cysts is scans and 
an endoscopy. An ultrasound is the first preliminary investigation, particularly useful in infants and children. The CT scan is indicative of the diagnosis, but it's the MRI scan, specifically the MRCP, which demonstrates the cyst and reliably shows the abnormal junction shown over here, which is a high risk attribute in terms of development of cancer. Endoscopy is another important assessment tool. This is invasive and the two modalities are endoscopic ultrasound and ERCP. In the endoscopic ultrasound EUS, a flexible tube is passed down through the mouth into the gullet, down through the stomach and parks itself right next to the pancreas gland and takes direct picture from over here or within stomach, assessing the cyst and, it, and its relationship with the pancreas tube and the pancreas, as well as the presence of stones, crystals, sludge and malignancy. With an ERCP, a flexible tube is passed down similarly, but in this case, the endoscopist cannulates the exit point and then illustrates the cyst as well as the pancreas tube with a dye to get a picture of the cyst and the pancreas tube. This will also allow for passing a much smaller scope called a cholangioscope to take direct biopsies of the inside of the cyst. Now let's look at some pictures. This is an MRI scan showing the bile tube which is normal up in the liver but down here you can see a cystic dilatation and this is the pancreas tube and this is the abnormal communication shown clearly on this scan. This is a picture obtained by ERCP with a, with a very similar appearance as shown on the MRCP with a cystic dilatation. Now let's review the treatment for the cholidopal cyst. This is a type 1 cyst which is the commonest and the treatment involves removing the cyst entirely along with the gallbladder through surgical excision and then once the cyst is removed bring up a loop of small bowel and join that to the bile duct so that the bile can then flow back into the bowel without any hindrance. A procedure called hepatic hydrogenostomy. This is the most effective way of dealing with the type 1 cyst and eliminating the future risk of complications and cancer. Type 2 cyst, which is an outpouching from the main bile tube, is just simply surgically excised. Similar to types 1 and 2, type 4 cysts are removed with surgery, especially if they are outside of the liver. If they cause complications within the liver, then sometimes a liver resection is required. The gallbladder is removed at the same time. The usual treatment of type 3 cysts, which which has a low risk of malignancy and complications somewhat different. This is endoscopic with the tube passed into the small bowel and it aims to make the opening of the bile tube bigger so as to mitigate the complications of the cyst and allow the bile to escape. Procedure called sphincterotomy. The treatment of type 5 cysts called the Caroli's disease is more complex and just like the treatment of choreodocal cysts in general this should be carried out in specialist units. It may include a variety of different techniques including surgery to control the symptoms. However, if there is liver disease in terms of fibrosis in Caroli's syndrome, then a liver transplantation is often the treatment that gets rid of the myriad complications. In terms of treatment, what about those patients who either do not want surgery or are not candidates for surgery? Thankfully, it is quite likely for the cholidocal cyst not to cause any symptoms. However, complications may arise specifically stones inside the bile duct or stricture at the exit of the bile tube itself, in which case an ERCP is performed to retrieve the stones and some, sometimes to insert a stent which is a tube that connects the bile tube to the bowel. If there are infections, antibiotics are often deployed to get rid of the infection. Unfortunately, these are recurrent problems and are not easy to deal with. An MRI scan may be deployed for surveillance in terms of development of cancer in the future. Endoscopic assessment directly of the cyst wall is another technique but this is invasive and it, and it is associated with risk. This completes the topic of the cholidocal cyst. I hope this has been of value. If you have any comments, please do share.